Isaiah chapter 56 verse 1 and 6 to 7. I will bring foreigners to my holy mountain, thus says the Lord, observe what is right, do what is just, for my salvation is about to come, my justice, about to be revealed. The foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, ministering to him, loving the name of the Lord, and becoming his servants, all who keep the Sabbath free from profanation and hold to my covenant, them I will bring to my holy mountain, and make joyful in my house of prayer, their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be acceptable on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Today's, today's reading is very interesting on several levels. When King Herod rebuilt the temple between 19 and 9 BC, he built a large separated area referred to as the court of the Gentiles, because the Gentiles, non-Jews from any race or religion, were permitted to enter this great open courtyard of the temple area. Anywhere in it, but they were forbidden to go any further than the outer court. They were forbidden from entering any of the inner courts, and warning signs in Greek, and Latin, give strict warning that the penalty for such trespass was death. Matthew chapter 23 verse 13, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, Pharisees, you hypocrites! You lock the kingdom of heaven before human beings. You do not enter yourselves, nor do you allow entrance to those trying to enter. There were also political issues that required an exclusionary stance. In today's reading from the book of Isaiah, who lived 700 years before Christ, is welcoming foreigners, or non-believers to the temple, so what changed? The word Pharisee, means separated ones, they strictly observed strict observance of religious ceremonies and practices. They thought of themselves as separated from the average person, or sinful ones. There are only a few differences between them and the Sadducees and other Jewish sect. God gave us the Ten Commandments to follow and Jewish religious leaders added another 603 laws to the Ten. This then gave them total control of temple activities and for the most part, they turned from recognizing God's power as absolute to considering their own power, their own power as equal to God's power. As John Dahlberg Acton said, power tends to corrupt and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Today, we welcome all people to our church, and just like the people of Isaiah's time the welcome is not unconditional. There must be a decision to commit to the rules. At most, if not all, funerals, the priest, and or deacon, will make an announcement at communion time, that only Catholics may receive communion. If you are of another faith you can still receive God's blessing by joining the communion line and crossing your arms across your chest. Every faith is structured by rules that should respect for God, violators will not be killed, as was the case in the time of Jesus, if a non-believer attempted to enter the inner courts of the temple. Acts chapter 10 verses 34 to 35, Peter tells us, Then Peter proceeded to speak and said, In truth, I see that God shows no partiality. Rather, in every nation whoever fears him and acts uprightly is acceptable to him. Christians show their devotion to the Lord by their service, worship, and obedience. Going back as far as Genesis we hear God promise Abraham, that through him all peoples of the world will be blessed. In Deuteronomy 3 verses 2 through 9, we read of the listing of those that are not permitted to worship in the temple. The author of this chapter has taken on a more open and universal position of welcoming not excluding people. One of the marvelous things about community is that it enables us to welcome and help people in a way we couldn't as individuals. When, when we pool our strength and share the work and responsibility, we can welcome many people, even those in deep distress, and perhaps help them find self-confidence and inner healing. Jean Vanier, Community and Growth